Hello, hello, welcome to episode two. Children of God. The way to the village. I'd like to take Sure. Um, we are, <clears throat> pardon me, the party is currently uh, traveling on a faded path through a dark forest after having come across a monk riding, sorry, uh, a druid riding another druid. Um, unfortunately, uh, one was in its T-Rex form, and the other one was mad. Um, uh, however, with some clever thinking, the party... <coughs> Excuse me. The party was able to uh, get rid of the T-Rexes pretty handily. Very clever thinking, thanks to Twee. MVP of the... Yeah, that was really impressive. Um... Um, so, would the party like to uh, continue along the portrayal? And I've cleared control of uh, Jack Harkness. Yes, let's travel with moving parts. Um, the party travels on uh, for a few more hours um, before you start to notice that up ahead, um, a little ways off the path, the trees seem to thin and you can make out some um, straight... Uh, objects and straight lines. How would you like to proceed? Can we observe those straight objects? <clears throat> Sorry, guys. I'm Wait, are they sick. like on the ground? Or... Uh, How long are they? Give me perception checks. Um, for most of you, it's really hard to make out through the trees. All that you can tell is that there's something ahead through the trees that is not a tree as well. That looks artificially made. Um, Vastra, you and Jack are able to tell that there's some sort of stone uh, up ahead, um, but it doesn't look like a structure. Uh, more maybe a fence or ornamental. Um, you guys would still need to get closer to, to tell. Does it look like so it's man-made? Yes. Looks like uh, carved stone. Well, there's some sort of large man-made structure we're coming upon. Appears to be made of stone. Uh, do you guys continue to go up the up ahead the, on the path? I think maybe we benefit from intel. Let's send a stealthy member up front. Get an idea of what it is we're coming up on, and then come back and report. <clears throat> yeah? I have laryngitis. I'm sorry about my voice. Recovering from the fight with the T-Rexes. What is the rest uh, of the Jack think? says, I think I'm the stealthiest one here i could take a peek um jack uh goes forward a bit on the path um jack go ahead and give me another perception check seven yeah um, you'll have to get closer to make out anything more you can it's still hard to see through all the trees and the branches uh, can I creep forward, uh, trying to be stealth? Yeah, go ahead and give me a stealth check. Ten? You try, um, but you also know that the party is getting a little exasperated that um, they can hear you from from back there, and you're supposed to be the stealthy one. Stealthy one is not now. that bad. I murmur. Um, do I, can, am I able to make out anything 
Uh, I've already moved forward. I might as well. Yes, you, um, you're able to tell that it's a graveyard. It's an old one. Um, not a whole lot of big mausoleums, mostly stones and um, various statues and obelisks, things like that. Um, small bit of a, a wall around it that's mostly crumbled into nothing. Um, when you can see on the ground uh, what appears to have been the old cast iron gate that would have one, at one point um, kept the place closed up. Um, I'd go back to the party. And, uh, I let them know that, uh, it's a graveyard. There's some mausoleums and things like that. Let's go check it out. Go ahead and share the map with you guys so you can see the, uh, see the graveyard. Um, sweet. Alone. See if there's any like, <clears throat> like family names that have long lineages or, or, or names that are on especially ornate gravestones. Uh, just a moment, I apologize. So are you guys walking into the graveyard? Yeah. Wow. We already um, said it. All right, I will go ahead and put you guys on the map. The, uh, uh, as we're walking up, uh, th perhaps this will give us a chance to learn something of their culture. I'm assuming we don't see all of those guys yet. No. I agree, there's a lot to be learned from the dead. I'm tempted. I'm sorry, I thought I had Wait, it all set up to just like dragging. What culture are you from originally? Uh, I'm going to move towards kind of the front of the party. He's going to just like stare out and just look into dead space. I don't know. Confused. Well, you are a curious creature. Pui is gonna grab her head by one hand and spin it around and be like, I think Jack would also be at the front since he kind of started to sneak up. Okay. Um, yeah, you see uh, in, ahead of you a slight rise uh, where the trees have thinned out. There are only a few um, apple trees. They're not evil, they're just apple trees, and they're not in season at the moment. Um, <clears throat> uh, but the place does have a bit of a creepy, eerie feel to it. It is an old graveyard that um, has a, a bit of an ornate um, thing up at the top. You can't quite see what it is, because um, it is up a slight slope. Um, but you can make out uh, what appears to be four statues um, standing vigil at the top of the hill. Do we have any, like, 
feelings or like you know is there any what's the atmosphere of this place oh yeah a uh, creepy graveyard if you were to give it an aesthetic, like, it would uh, be... Study the statues a little bit closer? Um, yeah, so the... The statues have carvings on them, lots of intricate knot, um, and knots and repeating patterns, um, and some fanciful uh, shapes that are reminiscent of various different animal heads. Do any of this... Um, they do. Um. Uh, none of you are able to recognize them. Uh, did you? One of my... Eyes of the Boom Keep. And I. Uh, anything written? Um, they're family names. Uh, designating what families would have been in what areas. Okay. So, so what do you expect? Yeah, the runes aren't really something that translates into a word. They translate into names. So, like, I still don't... Yeah. Yeah, like... Jared, you know, or Robert. From Subway? Eric from Subway. Um, stop there. Uh, yeah, so, uh, Jack and, um, Vostra, uh, well, every, and Roy, um, you are able to clearly tell that up at the top of the hill. Hey, Crenshaw, can you do that literally anywhere else? Except right where you're bumping into me. Thank you. Um, you see that these statues are not statues, but they are um, four knights in armor um, with swords standing and all looking at the center. Uh, they still appear to be statues? No, they don't look like statues. You don't get a statue vibe from them. You get actual metal um, and leather, uh, not stone. I draw my sword. Nothing happens. Um, Jack also draws his daggers. Uh, Roy would like to... Uh, can I look for any traps? Um, yeah, go ahead and give me a perception check. Twenty-five. Um, you see no traps. Uh, I don't see any physical traps. You also don't any see any sign of anybody having been here uh, in a very long time. The paths are all almost completely grown over. Hey, Twee, need any spare parts? Can any of you detect magic? Does, does anybody have the ability to detect magic? No. I'd like to inspect the armor. Um, go ahead and give me a uh, investigation. Could I argue for perception? Sure. Consider the argument one. Thank God. Um, twenty-five again. Yeah. So this is uh. 
not um the armor doesn't quite seem to match what you would expect of a, a culture that uses runes it seems to be a little more advanced than that um and uh it is extremely old there is a heavy layering of dust and dirt on top of it that is what gave it the appearance of being a statue at first um but looking close at the armor you can even see that there is a person with well decayed skin um shriveled and leathery uh in that suit of armor gripping a sword Please, it seems like you're a little expert. Can I inspect the coffin? Can't wait to um, attack. Did you touch the coffin? Just inspect us. Um, visual inspection. Um, this is an ornate coffin uh, made of stone. Um, that has a enormous number not runes on it it's a script in another language um flowing uh script that seems alien and odd and kind of hurts your eyes to look at for too long i can't seem to make out this language but it's hurting my head do you think it would be wise for somebody to try to read it Uh, it was not. It happened to me. Simply looking at it is giving me a headache. Oh, Rory, I'm going to go ahead and drag you into DM talk time. Oh, I thought I could just drag and drop you into DM talk time. Um, yeah, go ahead and link it in the chat. Um, so as you're looking up a script, um, it's not really forming, you, you can read it, but it doesn't quite seem to make sense. Um, and, and as you are trying to puzzle it out, um, suddenly a cold voice booms in your head and you freeze up and it asks, what are you? An elf? What elf? Boy, the elf. Oh. What do you serve, Roy the elf? You know, there's some... Go ahead and give me a wisdom saving throw. Mm. Uh, roll a d4. I have a plus four. Okay, uh, roll a d4. Uh, you take um, four uh, psychic damage. Uh, and uh, reel back. Uh, the last thing that you hear in your head is unworthy. We go out of DM talk time now. Roy's gonna walk away, rubbing his. Well, there's something in that coffin I'm that I'm unworthy. And to be frank, 
kind of happy I am, because I don't know if I want to be worthy of... I believe, uh, it's time for us to leave then, no? DM, by the way. Another one, two from where? Okay. Again. Make it your favorite stone, you water, okay? Okay. Is that uh, your TV in the background, Jenny? Oh, I, of course, his brother is, is a player. But then, in addition to that, maybe. Hey, Jenny. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm still around you. Nope, no vision by that thing. But it gave and this. Ask me what I am and who I serve. Yet it seemed to recognize who we serve. We are not of this world. Oh, I. How am I? Had a very. Hmm. Uh, DM, what did we see on our end? Uh, you saw Roy freeze up um, for a couple of moments and then stagger backwards. I'm up. Y'all want to give that one a shot? I think no, I'll give you a second. Yeah, why as we continue to, uh, west. And let's go to the village. Alright. Party so continues. I want to know. <laughs> Out of character. Like a bad. Well, here, we, we can, uh... Map for maybe coming back to? Yeah, we'll see. Is there a way to make little markers um, without you having just to... just have the map image up. You can drag and drop the pin. Or, excuse me, you don't have to have the map image up. If you go to images, and then you go to the little square, drag that onto the map where the location's at, and just make that link shareable. Wait, what little square? So if you go to the images and then uncategorized, and then go to uh, the assorted abandoned warehouse or graveyard, you see that gray square box to the left of the oh. uh, name. Yeah, just drag and drop that onto the map where you want it, and it'll create a pin. Perfect. Ta-da. Yeah. Um, so you guys found the uh, the abandoned graveyard. Uh, you travel through the woods. Um, the gloomy atmosphere does not lift. This is definitely a creepy, dangerous forest. Um, but you do not come across any more hazards until suddenly uh, the trees break. And let me share the map. You arrive at the. Stamen Village. Go ahead and put your tokens on. This is a huge... Huge? Do you remember where we came from originally? It was much larger than this. So it is a quaint village. Um, I'll just... Thank you.
their guards or anything? Um, yes, I uh, apologize for not having tokens for them. But um, up in the... Where's the ping? All these towers, um, you can see guards, and one of them calls out to you as you approach. Alt, who goes there? Uh, Jack responds, just some travelers passing through. Well, you're more than welcome, but please step th stay there until we come to you. These are dangerous times in a dangerous place. We have to take our precautions. After that, you hear uh, the movement of foots, uh, of feet, um, coming up the trail towards you, and uh, you see a troop of 12 uh, armed men with a druid and an old man in the middle. Once they get up uh, to just within a couple dozen, couple yards of you, um, they stop and the soldiers fan out. They don't point their weapons at you, um, but they are holding their shields, uh, and they could very quickly draw their, their weapons if they needed to. The old man at the gate um, comes up and uh, asks the question you've already been asked. Who are you and what is your business here? Jack responds again, uh, we're travelers. Travelers with names? Business? I am Jack Harkness. These are my, this is my party. Uh, Roy here next to me. And, uh, we are seeking a creature. The old man, um, has, uh, long, thick eyebrows, um, and they're squinted at you. Uh, he's a little puzzled. He's looking over your clothing and looking at your faces, and you seem a little odd to him. He says, what, uh, what kind of creature are you hunting? I don't remember the name. One of them. I... Well, there's plenty of those in these woods. Main among them, the one that we fear most, are the hags. More than one of them. At least three, maybe more. Nasty ones, too. The twins, and then there's an Anise hag. Calls herself Anise. Self-obsessed bitch. But they're the reason we can't trust you. So, if you will, please drop your weapons and step apart. We need to inspect, do a test to make sure you're not some illusion or some bewitched thing sent by the hags to cause more misery. Adam Bostra uh, takes off her sword and uh, with the sheath and gently puts it down with both hands on the ground and uh, lays down her bow. The old man looks at you and says, uh, thank you, um, miss? Madam Vostra. Madam yes, Vostra. Sir. Thank you. Uh, please step over to the druid. Jenny, uh, steps. Putting down her. Where's the druid? Um, he's just a little farther down the path. Roy's just gonna put down his shield. That in and of itself is suspicious. Jenny, oh, um, the uh, druid um, puts a hand up to Roy, uh, and then says in a soft voice uh, to Madame Vostra, uh, "Come closer." Cool. And as you do, he makes some motions with his hands, and um, go ahead and give me an Arcana check, Madame Vostra. Ah, oh, yes, my uh, expertise, Arcana. Ooh, 19. Um, despite not being especially adept in Arcana, um, 
This is, he's casting Identify on you. Oh. Uh, after the casting, though, he says, You're good. Uh, step this way, and he motions to his right uh, for you to go a little farther down the path. Who's next? May I collect my weapons, sir, or are you going to hold on to them? Hmm. Oh. Uh, Dawn, can you grab uh, this one's weapons? Bring them to her. One of the guards nods and walks over to uh, pick up your weapons and bring them to you. Thank you, sir. May I wear my veil? My appearance tends to draw attraction. I don't uh, appreciate the druid raises an eyebrow and says, You're welcome to, but you'd draw more attention trying to hide yourself in these parts. What the old man said about the hags is very true. I see. Perhaps I will forgo it for now. Uh, Roy, um, once you approach, the druid casts um, a spell on you. Uh, go ahead and give me an arcana check to see if you can figure out what it is. Yeah, it's identify. Um, That's cool. Does he does he raise an eyebrow? No. Um, yeah, he motions for you to go on as well, and a guard uh, grabs your weapons and brings them to you as well. The same process is repeated with um, step forward. Yeah, with the next three party members, um, without issue. Uh, and then once that's done, um, the old man uh, says, Okay, so, you're allowed in the village? Suppose I should give you a short bit of a tour. And, that would be uh, very welcome. But sir, the old man, old man walks you up to... Um, the entrance uh, of the village, um, and he points up at the big building right smack in the um, entrance of it and says, For visitors, you'll have most of what you need right here in the North Hall. Um, a couple of the chiefs are probably in there, one or two. You can get food and uh, housing. It won't cost you much either. You said your travelers coming to hunt something. Uh... Is that something nearby to uh, the Stamen, or are you going farther away? I'm afraid we do not know. Mm. Your hag problem does interest me, though. We'll definitely talk more about the hags, but a uh, quick question. Were you with a larger group of people sent to kill some thing any of us who are job aren't with hmm. well you're not the first group to come through here with this same vague task uh i'll let you know most don't get much further than the village or the town any Most can't find anything to kill. Not that it's the description of what they were given. Seems this task is going to be more difficult than our hiree. Uh or higher, or uh, led us to believe. Well, if they stick to word of pay, much bigger of a headache by the time. So, why is it you have not killed these hags yourself? Um, the man chuckles. Uh, <laughs> lad, 
or sorry, uh, ma'am, I don't know if you've ever heard of or met a hag before, but one hag is enough to haunt a culture for generations. We've got at least three. The fact that we figured out how to protect ourselves as much as we have with these walls and identify is, uh, well, quite a miracle. I'm one of the few of my own generation to live to adulthood. Most of my siblings and my friends were all taken and eaten, or turned into monsters that serve those bitches in the woods. Can I ask why such an unusual... Such an unusual what? number of hags might uh, occupy or haunt your village, as you put it. You're right, it seems like a high number, so why? Not sure. Hags have always been a part of our world, our lives. There's old stories telling of them, uh, going back as far as anybody can remember. But it wasn't until maybe a decade or so ago that something happened, and they went from maybe once or twice snatching some small child here or there to well, almost eradicating entire families. How have you guys survived? This village seems quite large. Well, this village is, uh, this town, really, um, is the center for, uh, all the civilization essentially in this region there's four clans that call this town home and it's the contribution of those four clans that makes this town possible it was built mostly out of a need uh, rather recently um, before it was a place to meet for trade and celebration now it's become a place of refuge when the hags come out um, and send their beasts after everybody north of the river south of the river is still pretty safe um, but Probably won't be too long before the hags start to reach out there as well. Well, perhaps what we are searching for our own beastie. There is profit in us for helping deal with your hag situation. Well, can't promise you a whole lot in way of coin. We're not exactly a rich people. But we've got food, shelter, and we can provide some degree of security. And if you're able to help us out with the hags, you'll have all the food, shelter, and security that our people can give you in our eternal gratitude. Doesn't but sound half bad to me. That's Besides, we... I really don't want to know what kind of business you might have with the hags. But if you the do want to do something... With the... uh, yeah. Oh, that's more to my liking. If you're really serious about going after the hags, though, you should talk to the chiefs. They won't be all together until two days from now, um, but I think two of them are in right now. I think that's intel worth gathering. If the rest of you are okay with it, they might even know something a bit more about our giant beast. Yes, I agree. Let's, uh, let's head inside and see what we can find out. I don't think they will be surprised to hear from us by the word of, uh, what's the old man's name? Um, I have a name for him. Uh, this fine gentleman. Let's, Very uh, let's gentleman. head inside, guys. Gaten and Gus. <laughs> the, yeah, that's Gus. He's the... the... Uh, he's not. Astro. Daryl. Daryl. Yeah. Yeah. No, not Daryl. Gus. Gateman. Gus. Um. So the North Hall is a. A uh, structure that has a stone base, um, but the roof and most of the walls are timber. 
and thatch. Inside is a big roaring fire um, with uh, long tables on either side stretching the length of the North Hall and lots of tables. You can see at either end of the building are uh, enclosed spaces or sorry doors that look like they re uh, lead to more private spaces um, but it is a very public uh, hall that even has some bunks and cots um, laid out along the walls where people are sleeping. At the, uh, next to the fire, um, is a one great huge person with shaggy hair, um, and lots of skins. And the other is a metal and leather clad, uh, man, um, with long brown hair pulled back into a ponytail. The two of them are talking and, uh, alternately drinking from cups while they look at the fire. I'd like to walk up to the uh, chiefs, the two men by the fire, I'm guessing. Um, as you do, uh, one looks over and uh, lifts an eyebrow and a glass and says, Hey, we've visitors. And a few of the others who are in the hall um, wake up and take a look over at you. Welcome. Sit down. What brings you here? Hello, I am Madam Vostra. We came seeking a great beast. We are being paid a tidy sum to eliminate it. This is my party. Uh, this is Jack Harkness. Uh, who else walked up with me? Roy. This is Roy and anyone else? I'm here to... We are a strange bunch, but we think our differences make us stronger. And your name? Oh, uh, I'm Albert. And this here, and he slaps the other man in the back. Um, uh, sorry, uh, slaps a woman on the back. Um, this here is Herlinda. The woman. Can you say um, that three times fast. <laughs> Hi, I'm Albert. This is Herlinda. Um, the woman who was introduced as Herlinda staggers forward a little bit after the casual slap on the back sends her forward, um, but then quickly re uh, recomposes herself um, and uh, puts a hand out. Hello, Herlinda, uh, chief of the Sasik. It is nice to meet you. You are the chiefs of your tribes? Yes. Um, Erlinda tells you that she's the chief of the Sasik, and the big guy, Albert, is chief of the Ike. How is it you guys became the chiefs of your tribes? We have our different means. Um, Albert jumps in to answer your question. Myself, I am the chief druid of my tribe, and as such, it is my job to be chief of the tribe as a whole. Berlinda here is the daughter of the former chief, who passed just a few, uh, just two winters ago. Illness and old age. If she had brothers, they would have been in charge. But, lucky girl, she doesn't have any siblings. So, nobody to compete with her and tell her what she can't do as a woman. Well, I do appreciate a strong woman. Albert smiles through a big mustache. And, um, her Linda gives you a sight smile as well. I smirk back. All of you. Half dragon. Um, her Linda, I... Sorry, I haven't really thought of a voice for Helena that doesn't just like an awful falsetto. Should I just do it? Should I do an awful falsetto? Absolutely. Amazing. Well, I don't want her to sound too soft. Hmm. Helena. 
All right, travelers, I understand that you've probably come a very long way um, from, well, extremely foreign lands. We can talk more in the morning. Would you like to uh, find some rest? There are some open mats and cots around. You're welcome to help yourselves. Whatever food's out in the morning, you can also help yourselves to as well. I and the other chiefs will uh, all be gathered here by lunchtime tomorrow to talk to you. Wherever you go, just make sure that you're here by noon so that we can speak with you again. That sounds fair to me. I suppose we will speak tomorrow then. It was nice meeting you. Um, no, tomorrow Herlinda, then? Tomorrow. Perlinda and Albert exchange a couple of words um, and then uh, both um, step out and walk out into the night, um, but uh, head off in opposite directions. The hall is quiet. Um, most people are asleep or, have, or at least pretending to be back asleep again. Um, there is some food left out, a little bit of dried beef and uh, heels of bread um, and a tankard that still has ale in it with some loose mugs nearby. Um, I believe we should get a room. I wonder if our money is any good here. I need that. If not, I'm sure we can find some way to make some money. We have time. Perhaps there's a job we can do for the local villagers. Um, her Linda told you guys that there's, uh, like cots and just sleeping mats in the North Hall right now that you can just grab and sleep in. I was say, what time is it? It's late in the evening. Um, I'm gonna like go night. head to bed and like my. I'd prefer a room for the night. Uh, I'm just gonna look around and just. But if no one's awake, I suppose I will settle for a cot. The cots are shawl and animal hide um, with some uh, fabric um, with reeds stuffed into it to make pillows. And there are other hides that can be used as blankets. That honestly sounds more comfortable than the cots we used. Yeah. They all smell. Uh, you'll smell like animal hide, but yeah, it would be pretty comfy. Right. Um, is everybody just going to end their night? Well, yeah, I'll look at the town in the morning. I'll get some food, and then I'll... There's food. Um, looks like a situation where there's sort of food kept out most of the day, and people just sort of come and graze. So there's various different um, stuff that could be shelf-stable things left out. Um, some veggies, uh, dried meats, grains, things like that. Um, I take some of the grains and dried meat, and I leave a silver piece on the table. Which I'm sure some patron is just going to take when they wake up. Mm -hmm. All right, if uh, that's it, then yeah, everybody gets a full rest. Oh, I can, I can do that in here, right? No. Long rest. Uh, DM, is it uh, the scale for the money? Is it just 10 uh, gold pieces to, or for or 10 silvers for one gold? We don't know yet. Fair enough, I guess. Um, in the morning, uh, you realize that you are um, actually. Hmm. When, uh, when do, do the party members wake up? I wake early, up pretty early. Pretty yeah. Pretty much crack ass. You know, for fight's great time. And I mean, what time does the, the hall start moving too? Because we're in the hallway. I feel like we would wake up just when everyone also, else actually, does. Also, actually, Roy only sleeps for four hours. Meditate. 
Roy would have noticed that around like 4.30, 4.40 in the morning, a um, couple of uh, young kids um, started moving around um, and uh, stoking the fires, um, putting fresh wood in, waking them up and putting, um, working together to carry uh, cast iron pots of water uh, to put over, to start to boil over the fires. Other people start to wake up um, in their own time over the next couple of hours. Uh, you hear um, chopping and the sounds of cooking and mute movement as people begin to move and um, you can uh, smell fresh bread that has just been taken out of an oven. As the morning progresses, um, people come out of some of the side rooms with uh, handfuls of food or other equipment. Um, they sit down at the big long tables in various small groups, grabbing food, eating, and then getting up to go about whatever their business is. Um, they all take glances at you, um, but only uh, one small child, well, not small child, maybe 12 year old girl approaches you. Um, she approaches Jenny. Hello. What's your name? Jenny, what's your name? I'm LV. You're the visitors that came in last night. Yes, we are. You must be quite observant. Mm, you're not the first ones. Is this silver yours? No, it's a friend of mine, but it's for the establishment, for the food that fed us last night. Establishment? Mm, for the hall we're in. The hall doesn't need silver. It's already built. Mm, well, here, how do you pay someone for helping you? Or how do you go tribute to someone for helping you? Well, if you need food and you did all your chores, you get food. That's such a convenient system. Where we live, it's a little bit different. I shall endeavor to ensure my friends and I do our chores. Can I ask, when is the last time you saw a group of adventurers come through? The um, 12 year old girl pauses for a moment. Mm. A little bit less than three weeks ago. Uh, they're a lot scarier and tougher than you. Um, and they said they found it, and then they didn't come back. Said they found it, and didn't come back. Well, do you know where they were staying? Or did they leave anything behind? They were here for a long time. Um, they disappeared just a few weeks ago. Um, they had groups of people coming in and out, uh, trying to find whatever it is they were looking for, and they all went off to the north. To the north. Thank you. You have been very helpful. Um, you know they didn't, they weren't successful though, right? I assume that's why me and my friends are here. But yeah. don't that... worry, we're a very conniving group. We'll be able to find our way. Interesting adjective. Whatever. All right. Well, um, if nobody else is going to take this silver piece, I think I'm going to take it. It looks kind of nice. Please keep it, it, little girl. I sh do, am I aware? Like, am I, you know, do I hear the conversation? I'm not trying to hide it, so. Yeah. Consider it a gift. An adult who um, oh. overhears uh, what was going on uh, pops in and goes, Hey, um, silver's not totally worthless around here, but for most things, nobody uses coin. We barter, we trade, or we just do whatever we need to to get by. If you have coin that you want to spend, you can go to the smith. Um, he does some trade uh, that sees coin, but he's about it. Thank you, sir. And who are you, if I may ask? Name's Robert. One of the gate guards. I appreciate Robert your advice. 
speak to Where about is this gathering Smith? from labor? Uh, one question at a time. The question about the Smith? Yes, I apologize. I didn't mean to cut off my friend. Yeah, south side of the river. Um, Smith is in the... Beowulf clan. Some of the best Smiths in the land. Real talented. Not many of them left, though. They were one of the people that were done hardest by the hags. You'll find them south of the river, a uh, place with a uh, blue roof. Uh, Penny, you had a question? Just wondering if we could look to someone who would be most able to direct us towards, as the little girl put it, chores we could do to help out the village. Feels like we might be here for a minute. Twelve-year-olds do chores. The rest of us have jobs. Everybody in the village has to do something to contribute, or you're not part of the village. Visitors and travelers are welcome for a short time, but if we find you freeloading, we'll give you the boot just as anybody else. If you do want to do something to, uh, I guess, ingratiate yourselves with us, occasionally we send out patrols to try and kill some of the hag spawn. Not actual hag spawn, just a general term for the wear creatures the hags like to make. It's not the same as killing the hags. But every time we've tried to do that, people just end up dead. That feels like it'll serve two ways, too. Give us an opportunity to learn more about the hags. Thank you. You've been most helpful. What do you know about the hags so far? Control, we can help out. We'll embarrassing do. Embarrassing little. You know, embarrassing little. We ran into them. Uh... But they chuckled and ran away after sticking the werewolves on us, or the were people creatures on us. You saw uh, them? Heard them. Heard How them. many? I'm not sure. Uh, let me, I'd have to ask my friend Roy. He was more in the, the van, he was more in the front of our group at the time. I just heard the cackling. Possibly more than one, though. I don't think you I know, actually ever got one. Was it not? Was it at least one, possibly two? Mm. Whoa. Ed's gonna spark up. Ye Robert's eyebrows go up. You met the sisters. You're lucky to be alive. Also, well, there are stories that they can get into your dreams, but those are just stories. The sisters are a pair of night hags. Nasty bitches. They've been here for a long time. They weren't too much trouble until uh, that Anise hag came down from over the water. The Anise Hag's the one to really watch out for, though don't turn your back on a Night Hag. Uh, but, yeah, if things were to go back to normal, that Anise Hag would need to die. And how long have these Hags been terrorizing your tribes? Well... The hags have been in this in these lands forever, um, but they weren't a huge problem until decade, decade and a half ago. Um, not sure what, but for some reason, uh, the hag that was up in the north um, came down south and has started uh, encroaching on the hags that live down here. We don't know exactly what there is between hags, but with more of them, it seems they're more trouble. That makes sense, I guess. More of anything is more. Yes, they, I suppose they have their own ecosystem of sorts. Do you mind if we explore your town? No. They have their own 
go ahead. Um, be honest with yourselves, though. I know you're strange-looking folk, but trying to hide something around here draws more attention than being open with it. Thank you, sir. He, he then uh, gets up, um, finishes a uh, cup of ale, um, and then heads out. You guys notice that there are some children who, it seems that their chores involve um, keeping the long haul clean. Uh, constantly coming in and out with brooms, taking food on and off the table, as well as uh, used cutlery and things like that. Uh, can I go to the kitchen and see if there's any raw meat I could eat? Yeah, of course. The kitchen is uh, swinging, a set of swinging doors. Um, on the uh, north side of the hall. Am I able to find any raw meat? Um, you find a bustling kitchen with mostly young children and then two women um, who seem to be overseeing the children in cooking. Um, there is meat. Uh, you can see some uh, rabbits hanging up, pheasant um, strips, uh, cuts of uh, leg of it looks to be a wild boar, eat some beef um, hanging up on uh, um, on meat hooks uh, up against the wall. Excuse me, ma'am. May I grab some meat? Uh, the woman who you address jumps and turns around and then jumps again and goes, Oh, goodness! Um... Yes, I suppose you need to eat meat. Yes, uh, my diet is a little bit different than most humans. Uh, yeah, I, human. I'd be guessing. Um, you need it cooked? No, thank you. No. Well, uh, she glances over at the uh, leg of beef. How much would you be needing? Oh, just 16 ounces or so. 16 what? Oh, just a small slice, a single serving. Uh, uh, Ginny, give this one here a knife. A small girl with, um, who had just been uh, cleaning dishes um, comes up to you with a kitchen knife that she hands to you. Handle first. Thank you, little girl. Ginny, it is? Y yes. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, walk over and slice off a piece of meat and, uh, swallow it. And, uh, slice off another small piece and, uh, hand the knife back to Ginny. Are you a lady? Yes, I am. My name's Madame Vastra. Oh. I've never seen a lady like you before. No, I suppose not. I'm not from around here. Hey, we don't have anybody who looks like you here. Can I touch your... Uh, are there scales? Yes, you may touch them. And I hold out my arm and pull back my sleeve. Jenny's eyes are huge, and she has a wow look on her face as she checks out your red scales. Three. Um, after just a couple of moments, though, uh, she seems to get a little nervous, clam up, says, Thank you. Um, I need to go back to work, though. It's nice to meet you, Jenny. There's a lot of genius running around. Oh, did I just name um, both of them Jenny? <laughs> well, Jenny no, and then Jenny I'm and Jenny. then Jenny, Jenny, Jenny Flynn, my oh. wife. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I also uh, look at like uh, the lady who was running the kitchen, and I thank her as I head out. You're welcome. Woman looks a little concerned as she watches you leave. Um, as I'm heading out of the kitchen, I uh, swallow the rest of the meat.
Yeah, I don't show like a hint of shame or anything about it or like shyness as I'm, you know, eating the meat or, or when I was cutting it in the kitchen. Just like it was completely normal. Yeah, the kids working in the kitchen definitely looked at you like, whoa. Um, uh, so for those of you who step outside, um, it's quite a nice town. Uh, the houses are not representative. Those are actually the number of structures in the place. Um, and some of them are named. The unnamed places are residences. Um, you see a couple of cats and dogs. Um, but most of uh, the people outside, actually not most of them, all of them, are adults. All the children work in the kitchen? It would seem so. In the hall, at the least. Uh, Jenny was interested in checking out, like, um, the guard area. I wanted to get a feel of the strength of these guards, because, like given how strong we are and we're trying to go after the hags and they think they're impossible I wanted to get a feel of my party strength comparative to their guard strength by maybe joining in the morning practice or watching the morning practice whatever they'll allow um, I wanted to check out the level of equipment at the smithy I would like All right, let's, um, Jenny, um, as you look around to try and see what, you know, what activity there might be for you to join in on, um, you see a couple of young men following Gateman Gus as he walks um, across the bridge up to the north side of Stamen. Yeah, I'll follow them. I'll, like, shout, hey, Gus. It's not like I'm stopping them. Can I join you in your com? Sure. As Gus um, walks up the path uh, past the North Hole, more and more men um, come out and uh, join him and the other two young uh, young men. Um, and he says, uh, "These fellows are about to go on their morning run. You're welcome to join them if you want." Sounds like a great way to work off some of those sore muscles from our travels the day before. I'd love to join them. Thank you. Uh, Gateman Gus seems to be the one in charge of the other guards. Um, he uh, leads you and the large group of guards, about 20 or so, um, up to the gate where uh, Gus then stops, walks up to a small fire, and accepts a hot cup of tea. And then... Um, Looks at the group of you and says, All right, run away. And we will go south of the river to visit Jack, Roy, and Vastra, who are at the smithy. As I'm walking up, I'd like to look at like the kind of level of the equipment and, you know, its quality and stuff. Um, the blacksmith uh, is mostly dedicated to making tools. Um, you can see a large number of uh, heads of rakes, of hoes, of shovels, picks, axes, uh, utility blades, saws, nails, um, hammerheads, pliers, a huge number of technical tools, um, all made out of metal. Um, the majority of which uh, look old, well-worn, um, and like they've been kept up uh, well. Um, the inside the smith, you can hear two sounds. One is the sound of coughing, a uh, very wet coughing, and the other is the sound of um, metal smacking on metal. Can I see the source of the uh, coughing? Yeah. Um, if you guys go around to the other side of the smithy, um, see that the working side of it is facing the river. Um, the actual uh, furnace itself is being run by um, a young woman with very thick arms um, and uh, light brown hair and soot-covered face. 
Um, next to her, sitting in a chair, is a middle-aged man um, who is coughing into a dark rag. You also notice um, that a lot of the tools are also made out of copper, or bronze. Are there still, uh, is there still steel? There are like some steel stuff? items. Um, the hammers are steel. Certain of the hammers are steel. Um, and uh, some of the cutting uh, implements um, that, are, that need a, a finer edge are made of steel. Um, but most of the things are made of iron or bronze. Interesting. Um, noticing that there is company, um, the, uh, man, um, looks up at you, and between smacks of the hammer, asks, uh, how can I help you? He also stands up and approaches you. Hello, sir. Uh, we were just browsing your selection, uh, perhaps looking at your weaponry and things? Uh, Jack walks up. Yes, uh... He pulls out one of his bullets, and I was looking to see if you would be capable of designing this for me, or creating it. Let me see. <laughs> the uh, man reaches a hand out, um, but before he can get the words out, uh, coughs, uh, descends into another coughing fit. Um, yeah, the woman uh, continues to hammer on, um, only giving a glance at the coughing man. Once he recovers, he stands back up um, and clears his throat and is able to say, uh, you pass it here? Uh, Jack hands him one of the bullets. What are these for? They are for my weapon. You have it with you. Uh, looking around to see if there's anybody else watching. I uh, draw my, I hand him the, my pistol. It's actually a kind of a secluded area. Um, because it faces out against the river, uh, the other houses don't have a direct view of um, the working space. Yeah, um, I uh, dropped the magazine and uh, locked the slide back and handed it to him. His, uh, Eyebrows go up, and the s sound of the hammer stops, and both the um, uh, older blacksmith and the young blacksmith are both staring at the device that you just handed him. Yeah, that makes this sense. Is, this is beyond anything I could do. What? Where did this come from? Where did you come from? I'd heard there were strangers. Oh... I've been around a bit. You've been around places I've never been. <laughs> he descends into a short oh. hacking fit that he gains control of again. The work on here... Uh, reaching out for his pistol. Um, oh, I've been to lots of places. Many people haven't been. Any weeks at him. Have, mm. have you had that cough for long? Yeah, it's... uh. Uh, part of the part of the business. <laughs> you uh, said you wanted to make more of these things, and he lifts up the bullet in between a finger and a thumb. I could make these. You need them to be out of a uh, specific kind of metal. The casing needs to be made out of copper. The head would prefer if it was made out of lead. Hmm. We can do those. Got plenty of copper around here. And we've got lead mines. Katrina, do you think we could take like a small flat piece of copper and create a little push mold so we can stamp into a little jacket for the lead? The woman, um, who was standing over by the furnace, um, steps over and takes a look at the little bullet herself. 
and uh, she shakes it a little. Is there sand in this? No, it is a special powder. Do you have any, we call it black powder. Mm. Black powder, not by that name. Um, what does it do? How, how does this work? We could, we could make the metal parts for it, but as far as making something that's going to work the way these little stones do, uh, we'd have to know more. Yes, I figured we would have problems here. Uh, do you have... In our world, it is black, but I suppose it could be a different color. Do you have a fine powder that, when uh, struck with a match or uh, shown to a flame, it will sparkle, burn, or explode? You're talking about smoke powder. That's, uh... Ah. That's something the Southerners use, though I only think they use it for uh, blasting out tunnels in mines. Oh, really? That sounds like it must have some powerful potential to it. Not yeah. just some primitive powder. Barrel the stuff will send a house up. Horrible smoke and smell, though, and noise. Fires, too. Well, if my party is headed to the south, or perhaps I can persuade them to do so, I may have found a solution. Ooh. But if you're heading south... How much south, would it cost to make uh, 50 more uh, of these uh, rocks, as you call them? Well, wouldn't be much. Um, I take it you're uh, trying to trade in coin? Yes, preferably. Mm. Not a problem. Um, we don't use coin to trade here, but the metal's still worth something to me. Uh, so I'd be happy to take the metals off your hand uh, in exchange. Look, I, can, uh, I can't make the powder stuff, but um, I can make the little jackets and the little lead balls. Um, those we can do. Uh, hmm. You have to give me at least a day to try and make one first. I have no idea how difficult these things are to actually make. After that, I can give you more of an idea of uh, pricing and all that. We work off of a barter system. Seeing what mostly. you come up with. So am I. And perhaps there's something we could do for you. Um, he looks over at uh at Roy. None of you are looking for a wife, are you? The woman, Katrina, um, looks very glum and not enthused with this change in topic. I already have a wife, so no. Not particularly, no. Shame. Katrina's... I'm not looking for a wife, but... Jack says. Katrina's my only heir, only family. After I'm gone, she's all that's left as far as the smith goes for our people. And of my family name. Well, if we meet anyone who might be a suitor for you, maybe we will send them your way. We do intend to travel a bit. Just make sure they look good in a helmet. They'll need one if they're going to be around Katrina for too long. Katrina scowls, but stays silent. I think we've embarrassed the poor girl enough. Yes. Katrina said that. She then proceeds to start hammering loudly. Not necessarily productively, though. Um, I show him my katana. Would you be able to recreate something like this? His eyes go massively wide. Um, slight pause of the RP. Uh, I'm guessing that this is, like, multi-layer Damascus steel katana. 
it is a plus two longsword. So yeah, it is a incredibly fine example. It, it's more of like an Otana, like the larger. Um, and yeah, it would be made of folded steel. Well, yeah. Um, but both uh, Katrina and Karn stop and um, step up to you um, and put their hands out to uh, hold the blade. I allow them to examine the weapon. The two of them, both holding the blade, both fawn over it, and are clearly fanboying slash fangirling over the craftsmanship. Oh yeah, it's way out of their world. Oh yeah, no, they're they're totally drooling. Um, Katrina, um, the only thing that we, uh, I'm sorry, uh, you've gotten me a little flustered. Um, we can make it. Katrina is good enough to do this um, with my supervision, but oof. we would, well, getting our hands on metals that would do it justice, that would be the challenge. Most of the steel we work with here is tool steel. It's stuff you slap on in the edge of a piece of iron to give it some, some sharpness. It's not something that's tempered to stand up to combat. I would need some proper metal. Are there areas in your land that specialize in making such weapons? No. My tribe, my, my clan maintains... Uh, my clan are well known for uh, metalworking. Skilled smiths, things we pass down generations after generations, but we don't have access to much good quality metals. Um, those Where would we go about of... finding such metals? The Valandians, down in the south, southeast. They are not as welcoming as we are, though. And you'll have to go past some of the other, uh, other groups of people to get to them. Well, that sounds very interesting. Hopefully our travels take us that way, and I can return to you with some fine metal. If you do, I will be more than happy to make, um, well, do, we will be more than happy to do our best to make whatever it is you ask. Thank you, sir. And Jack, I believe that gives us another reason to go south. Roy, did you have anything for the man? Other than perhaps a marriage? Oh, no, just wanted to peruse his work. I, uh, I summon my sword and just say, My weapon uh, just kind of appears when I need it. The summon on it. Madam Foster rolls her eyes. Both Katrina and Karn um, look pretty surprised. Magic users. We all have a few tricks up our sleeve. Are any of you sorcerers or wizards? Not us three. Is a reason for the question. The magic users are rare in these parts. Very rare. The druids are the only kind of magic we ever come in contact with. Something like a sorcerer or a wizard. We have tails, but... Never actually met one. Don't even know anybody who's met one. If you are, well, magic users, maybe you can kill the hags. I, we do have a sorcerer in our party, but if I saw correctly, she's uh, pretending to be a scare scarecrow in one of your fields. She's an odd, odd fellow. Uh, perhaps this is why. They have struggled so hard to defeat the hags. With more powerful magic users, we may be able to present a better force. If Twi wouldn't, uh, join us. 
Kui is in the top left of the map pretending to be. Oh no, I'm just saying this to Jack and Roy right now. No, I, I know, but I'm just pointing out where Twee is and all. I had to go look over to find that Twee was actually just being a scarecrow in the fields. <laughs> I like that touch. Um, jumping over to Jenny, real quick. Um, Jenny, uh, go ahead and give me a constitution saving throw. Is Jenny around? Does she hear me? I do. My phone fell asleep and I had to unlock it. Okay, cool. Um, while you're giving me the constitution saving throw, I will describe what you've been doing. Um, so all of those guys are running around um, the forest. Uh, and you, as you spend time with them, you get the sense these guys are proficient in what they do, um, but they're just fighters. Um, skilled fighters strong in shape they look like they know how to work together as well uh but they're just fighters there's no magic nothing extra special about them um so the fact that they've even tried in the past to go after more than one hag at the same time pretty impressive uh it's not surprising that they failed though they are just mortal flesh and blood you need to perhaps emphasize that one more time i didn't i didn't quite get they see hey man, I just wanted to make sure we weren't biting off way more than we could control. <laughs> Sorry, I hope that didn't come across as You're good. I'll just kill you in game later. Um, there you that's go. fair. <laughs> Perfect. And I'm definitely not trying to like outshine them at all. I'm just trying to be with the group. Get a fill. I I went. Jenny, you're you're able to keep up with them um, uh, just fine without issue, though you are sweating and breathing heavily because you guys are running pretty hard through the woods. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Twee, uh, you do notice that um, you're not alone in the fields. Um, it appears that there are some people who come in to scare off birds and things, and they look at you funny, and one of them waves at you nervously. Like, over, deadly. Hello, friend. In the background, you hear a scream and see somebody fall down. It appears that somebody was watching you and uh, may not have realized that you weren't actually a scarecrow. Oh, I am... I... I... Okay. It's nice to meet you. Likewise. And then to off into the I don't think we need to scare off I th I think I think that person's gonna scare off all the crows quite well. Mm -hmm, yeah. Twee un unintentionally found a chore. <laughs> Find a need, fill a need. What, well, ravens have a negative four intelligence? I take issue with that Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. Um, yeah, the crows do not approach you. Up and, like... A sad zombie. You failed your role, but it's like Tass failed successfully. I can just picture. But like. Frolicking, farming. Carrying off every You do notice the uh, occasional, well not occasional, near non-stop glances people keep trying to steal over at you across the fields.
familiar face. And we all head back for lunch. Um, yeah, the North Hall still has food out, um, as, as there was last night, veggies, um, no fruit, but plenty of meats, cheeses, breads, um, things like that with, uh, watered down ale, um, and some milk available. Um, so I want to ask you guys, players, uh, what are you thinking of doing next? Are you thinking of traveling to explore more, or are you going to try and go after the hags? I think... Kind of the first own week. Right. Well, I can't... like the idea of having a place we can always come back and rest to, and it feels like... Defeating the hags might provide us with like a base okay. central. Yeah, they might be grateful for that. From what it sounded like, where bears are children, and I was just killing. And besides, when we took this job, they teleported us right into the fucking ball sack of the hags. It might be related. Back down. So fucking. Yeah, the thought crossed my mind, too. I vote for hags. All right. Um, I will make sure to prep in that direction. Um, what's left in the village for you guys to do right now, uh, besides more exploration, there's Nick's General Store, the Chief's Hall, Dora's Place, the Dockyard. Um, I think those are the only ones I've labeled so far. Um, the chiefs uh, would like to meet you uh, for lunch, though. When you guys Can we arrive, a meeting tomorrow. It was today. Oh, today at at noon. Yeah. So if you guys go up to North Hall, um, you'll find that uh, there are uh, most of the seats at the uh, big long tables are full. But if you are willing to squeeze in, there are spaces available at the benches. Um, as you guys trickle in, though, um, Albert, the uh, big druid chieftain um, that you met us last night, uh, calls out and says, Oi, guests, come sit up at the front of the table. All of you, make room. And you see a bunch of others get shooed away and sort of squished down to one end to make some space for the guests to sit up next to the chiefs at the upper end of the hall. So we sit down? Yes, sir. You meet all four chiefs. Um, Albert and Harlinda uh, introduce themselves again. Um, but you also meet uh, Chief Ostera of the Ulrich and Chief uh, Arda of the Ewold. Chief um, Arda uh, addresses you all. So I understand uh, you are the latest group to come down hunting the uh, Sigourney beast, right? Yes. Mm. So... Hate to break your bubble, but either the beast doesn't exist, or it's dead. And whoever has been sending you here doesn't know it yet. Because nobody's killed anything called a Sigourney. One group says they, saw, they thought they found it, but whatever they found must have killed them, because nobody's heard from them since. Did any of these manage to kill any... No. Did any even try to kill the hags? Yes. Kind of ha First clue finding the 
Maybe. The last North Continent. So, if this creature is not real, why did you wish to have this meeting? Um, five strangers came out of hag-infested woods, appear to be as they presented themselves. Um, but still, that's uh, not something to go unaddressed. We're happy to have you here as guests. You're welcome to our hospitality. But we can't have you here forever. Fair enough. We understand. Good luck. I believe we are a group that intends to help. We will not be freeloaders in our time here. And if we can deal with your hag situation, I was wondering, do you know where, like, the hag lair, where they might sleep? No. Unfortunately. Fair. I will tell you what we do know about the hags. There are okay. four of them. One Ooh. lives far in the south. She keeps to herself. I don't think she's in league with the other three. Though, I can't really tell. Not exactly an expert on hags. But we, give, we get no grief from her or her spawn up here. We do get grief from the sisters and Anise. Anise, as she calls herself, used to be some old terror for the goblins of the north. Don't know what happened. But she came down south. Since then, she stirred up the sisters, who used to mostly just steal the occasional goblin child. Um, stirred them up, got them busy stealing children, planting nightmares. And she herself is known to waylay travelers on the roads. As you can guess, that's made living in the north pretty hard. Those families and clans north of the river, those few that are still out there, are paranoid and live behind high walls with big fires all night. Most have moved south of the river, which has made things harder for those there. More hens, or uh, more mouths to feed in the same space. It sounds like everyone is quite strained at this point. I. A couple of years ago, we came up with the uh, druids using uh, Identify to uh, fish out any of the, the hag's tricks. It used to be that uh, just about every other visitor we had was some sort of hag thing in disguise. They'd come in, plant other little tricks, things like that. Murder in the dark, theft, starting rumors, anything to just make life more miserable. How does your people cross the Northern River? Um, bridge. One you went on. Oh wait, Northern River? The big river that... Before oh, the cackling um, wastes. Yeah, uh, I would think of that as a C. I should label that. Um... The goblins use a uh, small craft. Um, in fine weather, uh, days paddling can get you across it. Um, if the wind's good and you've got a sail, uh, less than a day to get across the narrower points. Not much uh, of value on the other side of that, though. It's the marshlands and the crackling wastes, goblins and other monsters, and not much that grows that you can eat. If we were to try and hunt out either the sisters or a niece, where would you guys recommend we begin? Oh, shoot, I'm trying to zoom in on a map that uh, on the background map, not the actual map. Yeah, that would be difficult. Not entirely sure. Somewhere east of. Uh, of the north side of Stamen. Um, but exactly where, we don't know. The hags are crafty. Careful. They uh, don't like to show themselves. 
I have gotten grief in the past for proposing this, but I think it has merit, so I'll propose it again. As he says this, you can see the other chiefs become uncomfortable. I don't think we're ever going to find their lair with us looking for it. I think we have to lure them out. Fighting a hag in her lair is a bad idea anyway. If somebody was willing to lend their child, we might be able to set a trap for, uh, for the hags. One at least. But that does involve potentially giving a hag a child to a hag. Why nobles gonna like spin up a bit? <laughs> what I oh. offer thee is my humbles. Only you keep open mind. With my compatriots, your help, would they remove? What well, my compatriot uh, here is trying to ask. They have a rather unique ability to oh, any body they graft their head. We that would require a dead child. Do you have any? Not recently. I believe it has to be recently dead. Yeah. It, it's better than a living child. I don't know why you're giving me those faces. Do we have... Do we have any disguise ability? Perhaps deception is in order. Someone. Very well. Appear to be I have. A, I can enlarge and reduce. Yeah, that seems. Can you enlarge and reduce? Now this else? seems like a better plan. Yeah. Shall we do it this evening, or another? Well, Where the, would you propose we set up this ambush? Somewhere out in the woods. There's um, households out in the forest. Uh, small paths throughout the woods can lead you there. Um, hmm. I suppose we've got somebody who's uh, visiting on behalf of family that's going to be going back home in the next couple of days. The hags might believe that somebody would want to bring one of their kids back home. The uh, chief looks up, realizing that he's mentioned something you're probably not familiar with. Since uh, the hags got really bad, all the children have been kept here, behind the walls, mostly up at the north, uh, north Hall, for their own safety. The hags would hound any house that had children in it, constantly threatening to be able to break in and steal them, or just snatch a child when your back was turned. Made more what sense to keep them all these children. children? They're hags. Some get eaten. Some get turned into servants. Some get turned into other hags. Though, as far as I know, no new hags have been... birthed. At least in my lifetime. I would like to see that the children can live in a better, more free world. And I do believe... Twee being able to miniaturize herself might give us an air of success. Can you do anything besides just get smaller? These are hags. They're not stupid. Absolutely. I am a maker. A, a maker? Sorry, Twee likes to draw blinks, but I, I am a woman of quite many. Change myself. A child beginning. Gotcha. Perhaps we could travel behind the party, staying hidden in the woods, and approach after the hag makes herself known. Not to be totally negative, but some of you are really bad at stealth, so maybe. Yes, I know. I am one of them. I'm maybe at healthy distance, or I can hide well... in the wagon. I was going to suggest, why don't you just 
Mm, you're kind of challenging case. Sorry, Madam Vastra. But if we could disguise ourselves as part of the family returning, then it wouldn't matter if you're clanky because you're supposed to Madam be. Madam Vastra, may I offer a suggestion other than your veil made of lead? It is not made of lead, but what? That's it. Just wear the veil. You don't think the hags will find that suspicious? So I think we have a plan here. We can figure out the details. Indubitably. Would they be riding with a wagon? Maybe I could hide in that. Everyone else can pretend to be a part of the family. I. Most people travel here on wagons and travel back. Hours. It won't be that hard. You just have to pretend to be family. I'm fortunate I don't have to pretend. I simply have to hide. And how will we make Twee appear vulnerable for the hag to come out? Like, goes stops reading. Silent. Five minutes. Uh, looking at the... Well, when does this family head out? Um, well, we'll have to ask around to find where the next family's heading back home. They usually come in for a couple days or two. Uh, older son, father, uncle. To uh, do a bit of trading on behalf of the rest of the family and bring and pick up news. Okay. Is everybody ready to head out today or should we try to head out tomorrow? I think tomorrow will take a little more time to uh, prepare. We also want to make sure that the uh, family who you'll be replacing uh, agrees to it. Yes, we wouldn't want to force any sacrifice on someone who's not willing to make it. I mean, I do kill him before sacrifice. Um, I'm going to go ahead and... Well, if you guys still want to do stuff in the village, totally welcome to. Um, but for going after the hags, I will have to build all that. Um... And, yeah, and I want to wait saying, for uh, Jack to be here. Are you saying this would be fair. a good place to end? Um, yeah, unless there's more you want to learn about the village, or the town. I keep wanting to call it a village, but it's bigger than a village. It's definitely bigger than a village. Um, I do want to, but I think I'm good right now. I'll say I just bought the car. I'll go ahead. I'm here.